morning, good morning and shalom. I trust that you are well this morning, this lovely third day of our morning devotions. Uh, we are going through uh, conversations from the book of Psalms. My name is Pastor David Ewagata. I want us to turn to the book of Psalm 20. Psalm 20. And as is routine, we will read through the psalm and then I'll just share some thoughts from it. Psalm 20. From verse 1, it says, May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. And this is where you say, Amen. <laughs> May the name of the Lord, the God of Jacob, protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will shout for joy. When you are victorious, we will lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant you all your requests. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven. With the saving power of his right hand, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. O oh Lord, save the king, answer us when we call. What a beautiful declaration. What a beautiful psalm. Uh, just proclaiming and proclaiming some of the blessings uh, and, and, and the desires that each one of us has. And so, as we started this conversation with the book of Psalms, we started with Psalm 1, uh, the blessed man, and we talked about just some of the postures that they should not take. Then we came and talked about the battles that the psalmist was having in chapter 3 as he was battling with his, brother, his son Absalom and declaring, many are my foes, many are they that rise up against me, but you, Lord, you are a shield for me, the glory and the lifter up of my head. And just saying, you know what, you may have gone through or done some very foolish things in life, but God is able to lift you up. Do not let that be the end. So today is a day of declaration. It's the middle of the week. And I pray that these words of Psalm 20 would speak to you. I don't know whether you're in distress or whether you are victorious, but this is the first word that I say here. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. The word shalom means complete wholeness. Means everything is working the way it should. It's, you know, your family is well, your health is well, your work is giving you what you need. You're getting fulfillment from your work. Your relationship with God is well. Your relationship with your friends, with your siblings, with your bosses, with your neighbors is great. And you can do a 360 turn around and not see one side of your life that is not having an issue. It's called the shalom, complete wholeness or wholesomeness. And many times we find ourselves with a gap in our 360 perspective. And so the psalmist, literally, uh, the psalm of David lifts this, his voice and says, in the midst of the, the, your pursuit of shalom, in the area of distress, may the Lord answer you. May his name, the God of Jacob, protect you. You may be traveling today. You may be going to um, an interview. You may be going for a, a business meeting. May <laughs> the name of the Lord protect you as you go out there to do what you need to do. May he send help from, for you from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember your sacrifices and accept your burnt offering. And the psalmist takes a turn and says, you know what? Yes, even as we, take, we declare this, I know there are things, there are sacrifices that you've made. There are givings that you've done. And sometimes you feel like, God, how I've given all this, I've done all this, I've, I've made so much effort. And sometimes we feel like, God, why have I done all these things and you've not answered? And he says, may he remember. Sometimes the, the thing that the Lord remembers is not the thing you did yesterday. It's the thing you did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I meet with young people sometimes, not young people anymore, uh, who we preached to when they were in high school. And now they have their families. 
And when you, when you meet with them, they say, I remember when you were, when I was in high school, going through this situation, you came and spoke and my life was changed. And you, I may be in a situation where my faith is actually being tested. I'm struggling with just accepting where I'm at <laughs> because of maybe a current circumstance, a distress today. Then I hear a testimony from 15 years ago. I was in high school, you led me to Christ, and I am what I am. This is my family. And immediately, that sacrifice that I made in those years of going or even walking, because <laughs> sometimes we went to those schools and we had only a one-way ticket. By the time we went all the way to Lanet, Moy Forces Lanet, and we had fare to go and Jesus to come back with. <laughs> and somebody tells you, I was in that school. I was there. This is who I am because of you taking that trip. They don't even know that you walked all the way. And Moy Forces Lanet was like, I think two kilometers from the main road. And we are walking back this way to the main road. It's almost 7 p.m. We have no idea how we are getting to Nairobi. And we get to the main road and hope and pray a good Samaritan will pick us up. And at one time, a good Samaritan came to pick us up, but there was only a, it's enough slots for the ladies to go. And so we released the lady, and as men, we said, now, this is what man, manhood is all about. Let's, let's begin walking towards Nairobi. And a few minutes later, somebody else stopped. And we found our journey back to Nairobi. Got home almost 10, 11 p.m. You can imagine what your mother looks at you as when you walk in at 11 or your father. But those sacrifices, when you hear the fruit, you're grateful. And may the Lord remember those sacrifices. May he give you the desire of your heart. I don't know what you're trusting God for. But may he, in this time, in this season, give it to you. May he make your plans succeed. All. In fact, not just in fact, your plans. May he make all your plans succeed. May every seed you scatter bear fruit. May every interaction you make uh, take you to the next place of God's calling in your life. May every prayer you pray be answered. This is what the psalmist is saying. And then he says, we will shout for joy when you are victorious. You know, many times when you are victorious or when you do well, many people are not happy. But may God turn it around for you so that people can celebrate your victory. And we will lift our banners in the name of the Lord your God. And may he grant all your requests. And then he says, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. When I think about this statement, I think David is saying, something beyond just what we are seeing in this world. This is probably looking back. Uh, I don't know this, if this was before or after Absalom's situation or if it was at a point where he was going through his persecution by his soul. But he says, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven. He's probably gone through an experience that he knew this is the end. And that is what he was saying in Psalm 3, you know, <laughs> You know, this is, the enemies are saying, there is no help from me. By the time somebody tells you, even God cannot help you from this. I mean, you are at the bottom end of your life. And then he says, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. And I want you to, to look at you today and say, you are God's anointed. You are God's called. You are God's chosen. As the, as the psalmist, as David would say, at one point he's saying, even my, peop, my enemies are saying, there is no help for me in God. And then he now turns and says, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heel with the saving power, with the saving power of his right hand. And then this famous verse, verse 7, chapter 20, verse 7, some may trust in chariots and some may trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Where are you putting your trust? Psalmist in chapter 1 says, the one who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or walk that sits, stands in the way of sinners or sits in the seat of mockers, but delights in the law of the Lord is like that tree planted. Where is your trust? Where have you planted your trust? See, some may trust in chariots, networks, net worth, connections. <laughs> Who, who knows who? I know a guy who knows a guy. <laughs> See, some may trust in chariots, some may trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand 
O Lord, said the king, answer us when you call. I want to finish with this story. At one time in my life, as I was growing up, I had this, you know, everyone in, 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 in Africa has to have a rich uncle or a big uncle who is connected somewhere. And so I was sent to see this uncle to help me get a, a position in a school or a job somewhere. And for some reason, um, I was already born again. And I remember sitting in his office for days on end. And then finally, he just kicked me out, hurled the insults and kicked me out. And as I left that office, I was crying. <laughs> but I was not just crying. I was crying out to the Lord with my voice. And he heard me from his holy hill. And the Lord rebuked me and asked me, who sent you there? And I was like, Lord, but my, my siblings have gone to his office and have gotten what they needed. And he asked me, who told you you are like your siblings? And I remember walking through the streets of this city with tears rolling down my cheeks. As I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I will not trust in anyone else. I will not trust in the chariots or the horses. Because some, for some people, trust, just trusting in chariots and horses works. But when you are the anointed of the Lord, he says, no, 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 no. Your trust should not be in chariots and horses, but in the name of the Lord. And let me tell you, years later, I met this same relative. And God had opened doors. He was getting shocked at the things I was doing and the places I'd been without his help. Because he thought, when he opened those doors and told me, get out, it was the end of me. Some may trust in chariots. Some may trust in horses. But we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Father, we are grateful to you that our help is in the name of the Lord. Our hope is in the name of the Lord. And you never disappoint. As the psalmist says, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. And he's jealous for us. And that is why sometimes he closes doors for us. And some of us may be in places, Lord, where a door has been closed. And we are so upset. Why did he reject me? Why did she say, I cannot be, I cannot, I'm not qualified for it? Why did they block the course for me when I was rising very well? But the Lord says, your help is not in chariots. It's not in horses, but it's in the name of the Lord. Why? Because you are the anointed of the Lord, and it's him who saves you. May this blessing that have been proclaimed in Psalm 20 be your portion. May these words come true for you, that your desires will be fulfilled, that your longings will be satisfied, that your life will be rescued, that you can say as the psalmist, now I know that the Lord saves the anointed, his anointed. I bless you, Lord, and I thank you for taking us through the different circumstances in our lives and making us that which you want us to be for the glory and for the honor of your name. May you help us to know that this is the course you've called us to and not to trust in chariots or in horses, but in your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.